now, I want to talk about this first with Gerald Salente. How many times has the trends forecaster here, needs no introduction, said, when the economy implodes, they take you to war. And when people lose everything, they lose it. We've got his latest trends journal right here. He has written, Colonel Craig Roberts has been on the show. Paul Craig Roberts, who writes for him, has made the same point. Colonel Schaefer's made the same point. Countless others have said it. Pat Buchanan wrote about it this week. This could start the next world war. Russia prepares for dogfights with NATO over Syria, moving in their most high-tech fighters. S-400 missiles were moved in last week. World War III draws closer as Russia accuses Turkey of being secret allies with ISIS. Sweden says no apartments, no jobs, no shopping. For, you, know, you have to make way for the migrants. Woman raped by migrants asked police not to prosecute because it's politically correct. Russia has more proof ISIS oil routed through Turkey. Erdogan says he'll resign if true. It, it's on record that's where they sell it. The U.S. has all the satellite images. Saudi Arabia complains about hostility towards refugees while taking in zero. When they ran the whole attack on Syria. This is the information. Migrants attack police in Macedonia, puts up fence along Greek border. They're not migrants. They're military-age men invading who failed to take over Syria and now aren't going back into Iraq, aren't going back into other countries where they also invaded. They're coming through Turkey where the open door by the West is saying, come in. You got rocket launchers? Come on. And thousands in big hordes just marching in. But Lindsey Graham says he wants U.S. troops to come back into Iraq and Syria when he and McCain have been backing the actual Sunnis that started the whole thing. And in Europe, they're arresting people like Marie Le Pen, who says that there's a radical Islamic invasion for her speech. They've suspended free speech in France and Germany. And here in America, 15 people last month were charged with terrorism for having rebel flags at a park and offending people. I mean, this is how far we've gone into total tyranny. Oh, Marie Le Pen's a front runner in presidential election polls. Oh, her party just won the regional elections all over the country. We'll just arrest you. And then say we're going to pass global government carbon taxes and, and the TPP basically ratify it globally to stand up against the terrorist when it's the world leaders that brought in the terrorist. Gerald Salente, so much to cover, but I don't think I've seen a time in the last 30 years this geopolitically dangerous, and it's so disgusting to see Russia, in my view, on the right moral side, as much as I don't want to see them bombing a country, they are bombing the people that are actually starting the war. Uh, disagree, agree, where do you see this going? What are the trends? Trendsresearch.com. Well, on Russia, they were invited into Syria by the sovereign government, like Assad or not. You know, they had an election, by the way, in June of 2014. And there were some 50 nations that oversaw the election and said it was a legitimate election and Assad won. So Russia was invited into a sovereign nation by the sovereign leader of that nation, where the United States, the Arabs who you were talking about, the, the beheaders in chief, the Saudis, where they have 50 people lined up for beheading this coming week, they've already done over 200. They've attacked and, and supported the so-called moderate rebels, the Islamist jihadists that are overthrowing the Assad government, as you pointed out, an Alawite government, that made it possible for Christians and Sunnis and Shias to live together, like him or not, consider how brutal he is, whatever it may be, that's the fact. But all these other nations now, France in there, uh, the UK is voting to start bombs away. The Germans are sending troops into Syria. One country after another invading a sovereign nation against international law. And here in what used to be called the United States, where we've lost our rights, we, our commander in chief, decides we're going to bomb Syria and Congress refuses to vote on it. And 
according to what used to be called the Constitution, the United States is not supposed to invade another country, attack another country, go to war with another country unless Congress votes on it. And they won't even vote on the War Powers Act to give the con man to the right to go in there. So in talking about all this, let's begin with, and as you pointed out, all this stuff about, you know, these diversion things, you know, about uh, gay rights, about whatever, whatever is something may be about, you know, not look what happened in Halloween, you know, wearing the proper Halloween costumes, all these diversionary tactics, as no one's talking about the mass murder committed by the mass murderers, which the United States is right up at the top over there because of, you know, the other con man, the George W. Bush and Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice and Rumsfeld and Wolfowitz that sent us to war, Cheney. I forgot Cheney. And Colin Powell didn't get in any trouble for all the BS that came out of Colin Powell. It's just incredible to see them distract us with tr transgender bathrooms for five-year-olds and everyone complaining about how the gays don't have enough freedom all day while our governments engage in mass murder war crimes with Al-Qaeda blowing up every church they get their hands on and blocking major routes in the Mediterranean, acts of war against Russian ships. This is just over the top how dangerous it is. Yes, and again, uh, when, when we look at the facts and the numbers coming out, over a million people have been killed in Iraq and Afghanistan, Libya and Syria, thanks to the United States and its coalition of the killing. You know, Alex, I can't, I think they should put together maybe a, a commission to study how radicals come about after their entire nations are destroyed, the people they love are killed, they have no future in front of them. I wonder why they become radicalized. I can't figure it out. And none of this is being talked about when they talk about the refugee crisis. Yeah, what, did, what, what happened in Syria? Over four million families. And by the way, two of my friends that are doctors, Christians, that had to leave over two years ago, that are now up in Canada, that were living a wonderful life because Hillary came out and said, Assad has to go. I mean, Obama, Assad has to go. Kerry, Assad has to go. Who are these people? I'll tell you who they are. They're traitors to this country. Anybody that goes into a foreign nation unwelcomed by those people and with they are not a threat to the united states is a traitor to everything this country's been founded upon you're right and now but it's so created fun. giant threats to this nation and after they destabilize the middle east in this 20-year program they then radicalize and fund the most vicious jihadis uh, quarterback by saudi arabia then destabilize the whole world then they pose as saviors yet again what is their end game yeah. Sick people have no end game. Why can't anyone call a spade a spade? A megalomaniac, a megalomaniac, a Hitler, a Hitler, a Mussolini, a Mussolini, a, a Bush, Obama, a Cheney, psychopaths. Hillary Clinton, could you get a better psychopath than her? Look at that clip on CBS when she was asked, how did she feel when they found out Muammar Gaddafi was dead? And she goes on to that rant. We came, we saw. He died. He died. He, they should have came out with a straight jacket and took her away. Absolutely. Now, That's what mentally ill people do. I mean, I'll tell you, like commandos, military people that have to kill folks, if any of them acted like that after they killed people, they would be thrown out of their unit. That is seen as mentally ill sickness, and that's when you have to actually kill folks yourself. You don't like doing it. Here's Gaddafi, worked with the West for eight years, let us in, gave up his weapons, invested, met with Obama, believed he was their friend, had dinner with him and Sarkozy, and they literally set him up and kill him and put al-Qaeda in charge, and then took the weapons from Benghazi, killed uh, Ambassador Stevens to cover it up and ship the missiles 
into Syria, which they're now using to shoot down airliners and blow stuff up. It is incredible. I know. And you look at look at Libya. It was the richest country in Africa. The people had the best lives. You know, forget again. It's not my business how some other country runs their the other person runs their country. But as they're yelling about this, Samantha Powers, Susan Rice, and Hillary Clinton and Obama, that Gaddafi has to go. The meantime, they're slaughtering people over there in Yemen. We wrote about it in the Trends Journal. The day Obama came out and said the terrible things that Gaddafi was doing, the guy that was in charge of, of Yemen, Salah, had just slaughtered about 50 people demonstrating. That didn't make the news. Just as it's not making the news now, Alex, as the Saudis, as Hillary and Obama and McCain and little Lindsey Graham call our allies, the beheaders in chief are slaughtering Yemenis for doing nothing. Over 7,000 of and them. And they're now dead. executing people for poetry. And, and again, they're bombing Yemen. It's not making the news. And then you saw the deal that came out two weeks ago. The United States sold Saudi Arabia $2 billion worth of, quote, smart bombs. And who's in charge of the mass murder going on in Yemen that's not making the news? It's Yemen. Now the, the United, Arab, Arab, United Arab Emirates are bringing in mercenaries from South America to go into there, along with Qatar and Kuwait. And also, when was the war against Yemen announced? It was announced on March 26, 2015, from Washington, D.C., the Saudi ambassador. And then we saw this little guy, Blinken, who plays an assistant secretary of something over in Riyadh right after they start bombing and says how the United States is an ally in this murder, supplying reconnaissance, air refueling, intelligence, and armaments. It's not even making the news. And then, Alex, I wonder why, I wonder why they hate us. I don't understand. Only because we're part and parcel, murderers incorporated, slaughtering people around the world. And then they want to seek revenge. I don't understand. Sure. Well, if you add a dimension to that, though, the people attacking us are the groups we're actually allied with backing to slaughter the Shiites and other groups. So it, it even goes beyond that. In your gut, historically, you know, as a former lobbyist and, and you know, guy involved at, at state and federal government, knowing how these corporations operate, my fear is we've got politicians so far removed from the military field of battle, they're not even listening to our own generals saying, don't back this Assad takedown, don't back al-Qaeda. They've been saying that for three years. And we know they've tried to put the brakes on things. I'm really concerned with the Wall Street, Goldman Sachs reckless attitude that they have in the stock market, other areas, they're going to apply that to war, push Russia too far, and get us into something very serious. I mean, Russia has said that they're getting ready to shoot down Turkish aircraft now that come into Syria. Uh, Turkey says that's an act of war. They're going to attack. They're now launching blockades of the Russians. Uh, this is unprecedented acts of war, as Ron Paul and others have said. And meanwhile, I see people sleepwalking, talking about Christmas coming up, having no idea how serious the situation is. Yeah, you're right. And and uh, what, what, let's go back into Turkey and look what happened in June when Erdogan lost that election, when they didn't get a majority. And then immediately after that, what did he do? He started war again against the Kurds. And then what happened? And then all of a sudden, a bunch of peaceful demonstrations, demonstrators were slaughtered in Ankara. And then what happened? He won the election from a time when it was looked almost improbable, he's back in power. They do this all the time, by the way. You were talking earlier about France with Le Pen. Hollande, that little boy of a guy, little nothing of a man, his popularity rating, Alex, is the lowest in the history of the Fifth Republic. But after the Paris attacks, 
shot up 17%. Go back to 2000.